So I, again, uh, wait, sorry, we're running a little late today on our question and answer, but uh, we know that there are people already waiting. And thank you for coming. Thank you. So uh, for feel free to go ahead and we have people standing by. We know that there are people already waiting and thank you. So uh, feel free to go ahead and we have people standing by to take your questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer them. But uh, I just don't wanted to go over, today was a busy day here. I don't know if people realize, but I have a, a workshop in a community, a nice community. I like being here. I have all kinds of people come in. Uh, I had a couple of people come in today. One person uh, today came in with some cushions that she, she felt like she really needed to get new cushioning for. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cushions. And, and um, most of the time when somebody comes in with cushions and they, they feel they need to replace them, they don't need to be replaced. Oftentimes, the problem is not in the cushions themselves. In this particular case, the cushions were a, a nice high-grade foam, high-density foam, and it had a wrap of down around it. It was a very uh, well-known uh, brand name, furniture maker. It was only six years old. And they automatically, she automatically thought it must be the cushions that the overall seating has has uh, gone down, you know, it hasn't, hasn't been like when it was new, so I quickly realized that she needs to um, look at the bottom and she's going to get back to me to see what's going on on the bottom of the cushions. Um, so meanwhile, what I suggested that she do when she goes home, just take a blanket, you guys could try this at home if you're, if you're not satisfied with the seating or the seating has gone downhill on a sofa or a chair, especially a new piece, you know, you really shouldn't see anything happening on a quality piece of furniture for many many years I mean this particular sofa was five thousand dollars and it's only six years old there's no way that that should be happening so I suggested that she does get contact the uh, manufacturer to see go to the manufacturer route first especially on the high-end furniture to see if they can help you out but she's going to take this blanket and she's going to uh, fold it in thirds and put it underneath the cushion and then sit on it to see. If, if she sees a remarkable improvement on that, that means that there's something going on underneath. I mean, she can, as a temporary solution, use that blanket, but I would suggest that she call the manufacturer. And if the manufacturer doesn't, um, you know, help her out, then she might have to come to me to fix it. Do we have any questions yet? No questions yet. So, um, I got a call from another uh, client early in the week. Um, she had a chair that she couldn't sit in, and um, I, I went out to look at it, and on this particular chair, it's right here, um, I'm trying to work with cli all different uh, clients in all different um, economic brackets. So when somebody's on a fixed income, I like to try to help them out. She has this chair that, um, it doesn't look like much right now, but it had a beautiful slip cover on it when I went out to the house. And this seat, if you can see it, completely caving in. She can't sit in it. The slip cover is still in good shape. So um, instead of reupholstering this, which she couldn't afford, she's going to, um, I'm going to try to repair the seat for her. So I wanted to show you what's going on with this seat, um, this particular seat. It could be the same problem what I earlier mentioned about these cushions. They could have the same problem. But what I want to show you is this. Let's tip it up to see what's going on. Zigzag springs. I'm not really a fan of the zigzag springs. Patrick, are we in view there? Are we in view? <clears throat> so um, I took out one of the springs was just falling out. It was it was just attached by one clip up here. So I took it out. So I talked to the client about what we can do um, if we have to go th through the top and just reset the the clip which broke on the zigzag spring. Um, that was going to be a costly repair. Uh, I would still have to be careful even though the fabric doesn't look like much. I have to put it back on. I have to muslin it. So it would be a little bit more expensive. It would be double the amount of them. So we came up with a, a solution that I would remove one spring, the problem spring, and I would fill this in with foam. She actually had an extra foam cushion, which was good, that she let me use. And so she's only going to pay me for the labor. So it's, it's a fraction of the cost what it would be for the expensive repair on top. And, um, and a fraction of the cost of reupholstering it, and then your fabric on top of that. She has a beautiful slip cover, like I said, that once we fix the seat, it will be fine. By the way, I wanted to mention coming up on the Broadway Upholstery School, 
dot com uh, uh, on the online classes. We will be uh, showing uh, more slip covers, how to do slip covers. We have um, a few people interested in teaching on our website. I think that uh, you guys should watch for that. It's pretty interesting because if you're offering services, slip covering can be less expensive than upholstering, and this is a good this is a case in point right here. Um, but you do need to, if you're going to be doing slip covers, you do need to know how to do repairs like this. So let's let's get moving on this. I want to show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to flip the chair back up to show you. See how it's sagging right here in the middle? Just show you again. You can see that? She's been using it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of rubberized horse hair. Now if you don't have rubberized horse hair, you could take a piece of one inch foam. If you don't have that, could take some cotton, but what we need to do is we need to put a piece in there to give that support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just slide in my rubberized horse here and there between the springs. I'm just going to see how that looks. So that's going to be good. That's going to you know at least flatten that out for now. So I think the best thing to me is to turn this up. Just want to mention too, check out the YouTube channel. We're, we're very happy with the 7,000 subscribers. Um, we know that we can do better than that. I keep telling people that you're probably sick of hearing me say this, but um, we found out that there are 10 times more people watching the YouTube videos that even bother to subscribe. It's so easy. I mean, I, I, I'm getting, now that I know how important it is, I like watching YouTube. I'm starting to subscribe to, to things now more often because I know how important it is for the people who are producing the YouTube videos. Um, so, and don't forget, uh, what's that other button they push? There's another button you guys know about. Uh, the notifications and Notifications, bell. so you'll know when we're doing a question and answer, right? Okay, so I got that. I'm satisfied with that. I just want to show you the cushion that just this um, lady provided me. She had an old cushion, so what I do is I just cut it in half because I have to make up a difference in, in, this, in this space. There's probably about a six to seven inch difference that I have to make up. So I cut the cushion in half. I'm going to put one piece in here like so. Dad, I just want to mention that um, we have an overhead shot, so don't be afraid to, you know, utilize that. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to put both pieces in here, which brings it to about, you know, a little bit below the, the profile of the bottom of the chair, but that's okay because the webbing is going to take it down a little bit. But what you don't want to do, though, um, you don't want to put too much in here that it's going to stuff out the back too much. So, so what we're trying to do with this, it just, you know, it, it looks like a cheap fix, and it is. But what we're trying to do is extend the life of this chair and the slip cover that goes on it. And my customer is very appreciative of this. She's on a fixed income. I'm trying to work with her, and, uh, you know, I can make a little money on it. But I think for goodwill purposes, it, it's, it goes a long way, too. Um, I think as upholsters, we're trying to, if we're not reupholstering something beautiful, um, uh, we're restoring that piece. We're trying to extend the life of the other pieces like this one. Um, the alternative would be this would be tossed along with the slip cover out in the trash. She's going to get, once this is fixed, uh, sh this will last another 10 years like this or more, 10, 15 years. So I'm happy to do it for her as long as the communication is there. You know, you, you, you're talking to your customer about giving them alternatives is important. Now, some, uh, most of my class customers, they would say, oh, just re restore it, fix, fix it, restore it. You know, not be stripping it down to the frame and starting all over again, which is fine. We do a lot of that, but occasionally a customer comes to me and, uh, you know, they need to save a little money, so this is the way we do it. So what we need is the webbing. Let me get rid of a zigzag spring. I do not use zigzag springs at all. I love coil springs. That's what I use. And people might be wondering, why doesn't Kevin recommend coil springs on this frame? Uh, one of the big reasons I didn't even recommend coil springs is because the stock of the frame is not wide enough to support a coil spring. So that was not an alternative. Plus, that would have been, that would have been more money. That would have been probably, you know... 
$450 to $500 to put coil springs in this. Um, right now we're at about $150 on this, so I think my client's going to be quite happy. She, for $150 she's going to get her chair back, she can sit on it, and she's got a nice slip cover that was made for it. So right, let's get moving on the webbing. And your questions are appreciated. We got a lot of questions from Australia. Who is that from Australia, Patrick? That is Janine. 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 Thank you for supporting us. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this up. Um, I'm going to see how many webbings this is going to take. Okay, so I think this is going to take five webbings. The way, way I know that is I got this in the middle, and I know it's going to take two on either side. And I need good coverage for this. Um, I, I don't want to go cheap on the webbing at all because we need that support, right? So let's start webbing that. Notice I always start on the back rail. Um, I'm always securing to the back rail and then stretching to the front. The reason we do that is technically the back rail is stronger than the front rail, okay? Because it's smaller area, right? And um, that's the main reason. If you see, a, if you start from the front and the middle, there's a chance that you could bow out that that front rail. So that's why we always start. It's good habit. Most of the times, we're always starting in the back. So what you can do is you can get this uh, stapled first. Some people staple it first. Some people fold it and staple on top the whole thing. So you probably want about nine nine staples in there. Okay, you've seen me use the webbing stretcher. The gooseneck webbing stretcher is the best. Um, there's another open-end webbing stretcher that I don't recommend because these are very sharp prongs. So the goosenecks, the, the nice thing about the feature about this is your prongs are kind of within the tool and it's, it's hard to really catch yourself on this. Very easy on the other one though because it's, it's just, I don't think I have one to show you. I think it got rid of all mine because <laughs> it's dangerous. It's just the handles on this side and the prongs are just out. So let's give this a good stretch. When I say a good stretch, I want to drum tight, right? Usually you start at about, I'd say two o'clock. If this was a clock, this is 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. And then when you press down, usually it ends up being three o'clock. Although the better way to check to see if it's good is if this is drum tight. Just feel if it's drum tight, that's drum tight. We're gonna staple that. Never pre-cut your webbings. So on the kit that we're offering, um, I'm showing you very basic things on that kit. Um, one of the basic things is don't pre-cut your webbing. Okay, and the reason you don't pre-cut your, your webbing is because you waste a lot of webbing. At each, each cut, you're wasting about four inches of webbing. And webbing can be expensive. So now I'm going to cut this about an inch back. Whereas if you were, let me just show you. If you were pre-cut your webbing, you'd, you'd give yourself ample webbing, right? And then you go put it on, and then you have a piece that's four inches that's useless. Okay? So always work. There's another reason why you work from the roll from the floor. Working from the floor gives you the proper angling on the webbing if it needs an angle. Okay? Um, you'll see that more when I do the side webbing is what I'm talking about there. So I got one on. By the way, you flip this up, and you staple that down. Right? Very important, try to leave yourself, there's a very thin rail here, but try to leave yourself, if you can, um, a little tack line right here for your, for your next thing, which is going to be the cane brick or the bottom piece, right? Okay. So you can on the back, you can, you, can, you can fold this and staple like this, if you feel confident. Okay, stretch that. Release the weather stretcher. So I had another client come in today. Um, he had um, brought in a dining room chair, a, a larger dining room chair, and it had a box seat on it. 
and it was in tough shape, you know, needed a new foam and everything. So I quoted out a price. I don't mind telling you my pricing. So I'm here in New England in, in the Boston area, so my pricing is, is uh, moderate, I'd say. So I was uh, charging $125 a piece for the labor on this particular chair, and the, and the customer had kind of sticker shock on that. He didn't expect that. Uh, according to him, is why can't you just go over what's there, you know? <laughs> Made it sound easy, but everything is how long it takes. Labors involve time, right? So you, for you beginners out there, you're probably thinking, um, how am I ever going to get fast enough to make money at this game? Um, you will. Just it, it takes practice, and you will find your own ways of of speeding up. Okay, and part of the online classes is trying to show you ways of speeding up. Okay, among many other things, we have segments in there where I stop and I say, okay, this is why you bought the class. It's almost, it ha happens almost every every uh, class um, or every segment of the class. It happens. Maybe even sometimes I don't even mention it, but I really believe in the online classes in that they, they, they show you more, only because there's somebody like you who's taken the class asking the right questions. So I find um, that even when I'm teaching on YouTube, like right now, I'm trying to answer all the questions that I think you might have, but I know I'm missing some things. That's, that's what the online classes provide. Okay, and I think it's a reasonable price too. So I'm gonna do this in here. I also just want to mention that our online class is featured on Udemy.com now. Some people that's a little easier to get to, but um, of course they're always on our website. But our first class that we did is on Udemy.com now, and eventually we'll have them all on there. So be sure to check that out on there if you're used to using that. I've never heard of that, Patrick. Is it a good site? <laughs> oh, it looks really cool. Yeah. You know, we know that there are a lot of people out there who haven't found us yet, and we hope that uh, that when they do, they'll like us. And that's probably why we rely on people right now who are early sign-ups to the classes to keep offering your advice and and your comments. Um, we we like to. We heard from um, can't remember one of our one of our subscribers. We heard from, and um, I helped him actually on another project that he had. He had actually a um, very interesting. I found it very interesting. I want to show you something. I'm using the jute webbing on this, but he had a question. I'm just going to show you something. Hold on one second. Oh, I can't get a hold of it. Well, I don't really need to show you the show you what it is, but um, I, I talked about nylon webbing and how much I hated nylon webbing um, on traditional upholstery. But this question was interesting because they had they had zigzag springs, and they were willing to take uh, to do the same thing that I'm doing. They were going to take the uh, zigzag springs off and then and then pad it out with foam. And the question was, should I use the nylon or should I use the jute? And we were talking about it. And I said, well, you know, sometimes the nylon when you're on the top of a chair like that. Um, you're not looking for the quality of that jute it has a natural sagging quality. I want it on this, but on his application, because he's going from the top, we talked it out that maybe the nylon would be the better way to go because he's looking for less resist, less sagging there on that. So there's a good example. Do we have a question, Michaela? No, but I have a question. You have a question. Actually, we got Michaela. She's taken apart a really old Spanish-style chair behind us. And and uh, she has a question about um, she's taking these decorative tacks off. So I'm just gonna I'll just field your question from here. What is it, Michaela? Uh, Hold on one second. Let me go off camera. Take a look at it. <laughs> so what Michaela just showed me is she she's got. Um, She's got coil springs in that in the chair in the seat. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring it over here show, to show people. I'm just going to bring the chair over here. You got a good shot of that from the camera up there, Patrick? Yeah. Pat. This one I got holding up. 
Sorry. I could pull. Yeah, there you go. You got it? It was worth for me to take this chair over. This is like an old style Spanish chair. And, and what they have, they don't have webbing. They actually have burlap. They've attached the springs with the clinchets that you've shown me. I showed you how to use the clinchets if you've seen me before. If not, it's a tool, actually, it's a tool that I can show you in a minute. It has a trigger on it. It has these little clips that clip around the, the rung of the spring and attach to the webbing. Usually, but now they have this attached to the to the burlap. Then what they did is they took this heavy, heavy wire edge, which actually does the same thing as nylon. It's, it does the same thing as the nylon webbing. It does too good of a job. Uh, what that means is that the springs on the top, gravity needs they need to go somewhere because they're coiled, right? So when you have something that's done too well now. The other reason they did it, I understand, is because this sits off the floor. It has a, it has a, it has a, the profile is the seats way up off the floor, so they want it to look flat. I understand that. So in this case, we might have to keep this just like it is. I might add some webbing. This is actually sagging through here a little bit. I think the only thing that saved the springs from coming through the top, right, is the fact that they didn't have too many of these wires in here. But we're going to repair this. So this came in as an upholstery job, but a repair. We're going to repair the bottom. Uh, it doesn't need to be restored because we're in that price point where um, we didn't want to go too far over the price point. So Michaela's question was, what do I do with these? I'm going to tell her to keep those on there for now and, and tell her she, she's asking a question about how she's going to get the fabric off here. We'll just cut around this for now, just for now. Now, when we get into the chair, if we see that it needs we may have to call the client and say, listen, we think we need to re-spring this whole thing. But uh, because the chair is so old, I hesitate to do that. Uh, but this was, this was very timely. I'm glad we're doing this just to show you. So there's many different things that come up in upholstery. You know, you wouldn't think so. But um, in the course of a day here, we, we have things like this all the time. So do you understand? Uh, you, you don't have to worry about those, right? right? It's just, uh, you can just loosen the tacks up. All right, any questions? No, not yet. Oh, we just, um, actually, Patrick, do you have that story, um, the newspaper article back there that I can hold up? I just want to show people. I put it on your desk up there. I, might, I hope I didn't throw it away, you guys. It was there. Oh, there well, we're really excited about the online classes and somebody reported to the local newspaper came in and did a story on us. And I guess for anybody that's opening up a shop, I would recommend, um, you know, any, any time you can get a, a news story, if a customer is willing to, you know, go up for you and, and speak good words to the press. I'll tell you, it's really, for business purposes, it's really good. So they did a story about our online classes because I'm still impressed myself. Um, being a little older and being impressed by this type of stuff, I guess. It's how many people that we've reached through YouTube with million, a million views, I think, we're up to, or cl really close to it, and the 7,000 subscribers. But more importantly, I really love the fact that we have people from Australia and Saudi Arabia and France. I mean, it's really kind of neat, I think. Uh, so the local paper did a good story on us, and so I, I was thinking, well, the local paper is going to do a story on me about an international reach. How is that going to um, be good for my business? But guess what? I, got, I, I had about a dozen people who read that article locally, and a few people are doing, I, I, I generated some business from that. So never say never, right? So I would advise you to do that as much as you can. Uh, Facebook is such a, the social media is unbelievable way of advertising. Uh, you have to really pull out all the stops if you're going to go into business. You have to really go into it. Uh, the days of opening up a mortar, a brick and mortar, opening the door, put an open sign up, and expecting people to come in are over. Uh, you really do have to uh, find really interesting ways of getting your name out there. We, we recently did a, a friend's pop-up repair for um, a show that came to Boston. It's in Boston now. If you guys are in Boston, I would recommend to go see it. It's called Friends Pop Up, right, Patrick? Yep. Pop Up Bot. We actually. Yeah, uh, Friends Pop Up Shop. What is it? Friends, Friends Pop Up Shop. Friends Pop Up. 
pop-up pop shop. Shop. And what's interesting about that is we got a call that it was a popped button in the sofa. <laughs> so we repaired a pop button in the sofa for this for this show. So uh, things like that, you know, we threw that on, on it's a win-win. We threw that up on our, our social media and that was fun. And years ago I did the Napole I did Napoleon's actual chair from his uh, lost you know, place where he resided on, on St. Helena. Um, and that was an interesting, that actually generated a lot of interest, Patrick, I think. But those are examples of... Yeah, a lot of people like the Napoleon chair. Yeah, a lot of people like that. But it's an example of not, I mean, it might look like shameless self-promotion. It really is survival because there's a lot of people out there who are doing upholstery, but there might not be a lot of people out there who are doing upholstery who have the, those type of things behind them. So it, it is an advantage, uh, I think, and a good lesson for all you. So many interesting ways that you can present yourself. Um, the other thing, too, is um, if you feel like you're confident enough, I bring this up again, if you've been doing upholstery for a little while, teach adult dad classes. Uh, become the expert in your area. Um, and the, the kit, again, uh, the kit, I think, is a great way to do that, if, especially if you're a little shy about doing it or if you don't think you're skilled enough. Um, you could just take the kits in and teach with the kits. I would, if you're, if you're not sure of yourself, get the kit first, do it once, take it apart, do it again. You had enough supplies in there to do it three or four times, you know, so uh, enjoy that. And uh, we do have, often now, do we have the yearly subscriptions, Patrick, on... Uh, yeah, the yearly, yearly subscription is live, is live. and uh, uh, like I said, uh, we mentioned on the site, if you sign up for that, you get every, th every course we offer within that year is included in that. And once you get those courses, you have them forever. So even after the year is up, you'll have those courses. But if you just want the, if you want the ones after that, you have to re-sign up again, but the ones you paid for, you get forever. And um, I'm going to be offering, I don't even know if I talked to Patrick, but we're going to be offering uh, classes a little bit less. We're going to be starting to do more sewing, um, sewing classes, how to sew cushions and zippers on small cushions like throw pillows. And we're going to get into slip covering. And um, I, I think you're going to enjoy those classes too. So let's get, let's keep going on this. Unless there's a question that needs to be answered out there. No, not yet. Okay. Okay, so let's just continue. I'm just curious to see how this is going to come out, right? Out of staples. Oh, the other thing that came up, um, one of our subscribers asked if we were going to be offering certificates. I think that's a great idea. I think that, is that... That's not going to be too hard to do, Patrick, right? So offer downloaded downloaded certificates for each class if you complete a class. Yeah, we just have to figure out a way to get that on there. We'll talk to the, uh, the site programmer and talk to him. We're definitely going to be doing that. I really like that idea. I do, too. I'm going to turn the chair to show you what I meant about working from the roll and getting your angles on the webbing. <clears throat> when you pre-cut the webbing, it doesn't necessarily, that's another reason why you don't do it, is because it, it doesn't get your angle that you need. So, by the way, I'm going to interlace this, right? I'm going to go over, under, over, under. Gives you, optimizes the, the strength of the webbing, right? And I think what we're going to do is put five in. So when we put five, you want to start in the middle, and then you, that balances it out. 
Okay, so what I meant, I'm going to turn this up. So when you work from your webbing, it, it forces you to fold the webbing in a way. I don't know if you can see this. Let me just, let me just staple it first to show you. Let me just staple it. I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to staple this. Watch this. You see how that has a little bit of an angle on it? Well, it's angled with, with the tapering back or the angle of the side. You see that? It's interesting, isn't it? So uh, most people, what they do is they even up the webbing like I could do here, but you can't do it over here. You have to angle it, okay? So we have that set. I'm going to stretch that. So we st we're still trying to pin down the best time to do the question and answer, and we got we did take a poll, right, Patrick? And um, it, I think there was we were saying poll came back Thursdays were, were a good day. Yeah, th Thursdays, Thursdays, Thursdays and, and kind of midday, midday, which is kind of tough, tough to do. do since yeah. So the problem with midday is that I, it's an active shop here, um, so that's going to be a little hard. Uh, but we have found that many. Hundreds of people are watching this after it's, it's been live. And, and of course, that's when you can ask questions. And even if people aren't on the online classes, or even if they're not subscribed to YouTube, you can ask questions, that's okay. Kind of fills in the time, and I think questions is how we best learn, right? I mean, obviously. <laughs> and speaking of that, do we have any questions now? <coughs> okay, I think people are more fascinated in the work here that I do, <laughs> instead of asking questions. We, had, we did a question and answer with Jimmy last week, and I actually want to watch, if you guys, if anybody's watching, uh, I do want some comment on that show last week. It was a different type of a format, right, Patrick? Well, yeah. We had Jimmy. Yeah, he didn't really do many, uh, much upholstery, and I thought that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> we got to get, we got to, we got to find a way to get, you know, every, everything into one instead of just doing talking. We, it was a lot of storytelling around upholstery, though, right, Patrick? Right. So uh, we may have, we may have neglected some of the upholstery on the live question and answer. I like doing, I like doing the upholstery for you guys, especially something like this. This is where we save money, right? So let's do another one here, another webbing. I'm going to make sure I finish this before sometimes I, I don't get a chance to finish a project, but I think I'm going to be able to finish this one. There's a question. So we have a question. Uh, Erica. Hi, Erica. Is that, that chair you're working, working on going, going to be reupholstered? Re I have a chair almost, almost identical to that. I might have you do a custom video for me while waiting for the other one to be done. And, and the other one... Uh, we are waiting for the piece to come in. And actually, Erica, I have a question for you after I answer this one. You might not have seen the, the, the beginning of this, but this, is, this woman has a slip cover over this chair. So she's interested in just repairing it. So we're just repairing this chair. But the question I had for you on your, French, your petite French love seat is um, we definitely want to take it easy on that one. We don't want to strip it down to the frame because the French have a really unique way of upholstering. So what I'm hoping is that we're going to take it slow on that. Um, you did send a, a picture of the underneath, and it looks like the springs need need retying. That that I know, but the rest of it, like the the arms on that piece, are very unique. So I have to wait for the piece to come in. Um, they're, they're sewn arms with piping on both sides, they're boxed arms, and there's a very uh, delicate way that those have to be upholstered, um, very unique. But I would like to keep as much of the original on the arms and the back, the, the arms and the inside back, as we can. So I want to ask you if that sounds right to you, or if you're looking at the other pieces, this is how you check the other uh, sections of that to see if they're in good shape, okay? Because I'd like to be able to, so you have like a half of restoration, you know, and, and a half of reupholstery on your piece. The restoration is in the seat and the reupholstery is in the, on the rest of it. So does that make sense to you? And you're going to keep as much of the materials that come out of the seat. 
So let me know if that if that sounds right to you, or if there's a reason why you wanted it. See, I, I thought when you originally contacted us that you wanted to take that down to the frame, or if there was a reason for that. So let me know if there's a reason why you're thinking it has to come down all the way to the frame, okay? She also mentioned that she loved the show last week. There you go, Patrick. She liked the show with the with less upholstery, with more Jimmy talking. <laughs> she, also, she also mentions that the chair that she wants to do is in leather. She wants to do a chair in leather? Yeah, the uh, one that she said is almost identical to that one. Is it currently in leather? I'm not sure. Uh, so if she has a chair that's in leather, that she wants to switch to a leather chair. Leather work is a little harder than fabric. Um, so, and the right type of leather is really important on upholstery. Some leathers are too thick, and I'm finding a lot of problems with leather lately. Uh, the quality of leather, even so-called high-end leather. So there's only one leather that I would recommend out there, and I don't mind giving you the name, it's Spinnybeck. That's the only leather I would use. Um, leather quality, like I said, across the board seems to be going down. Except for them. I hope I answered her question. I'm not sure if I Let's get this piece on. Dan, Erica said it's in uh, mid-century fabric right now. She wants to change it to leather. Oh, um, okay. It's a mid-century fabric or piece? Piece, sorry. But it's in fabric right now. Yeah. So, um, and, and you say you think it looks like this. I mean, you certainly can do a piece like this in leather. But some mid-century furniture, as you know, has curves. Uh, I just had somebody call me about a swan chair. I don't know if you guys know what a swan chair looks like. Thick swan, <laughs> that's pretty much what it looks like. It's got all these curves, in, inverted curves and everything now. <clears throat> and the, the question was, can they do, that definitely has to be a wool. That you have to do that, a solid wool, period. It's the only fabric that works. And a womb chair, W-O-M-B, uh, that Noel makes. That also is a, a chair that needs wool. So if you have a chair that looks like this, certainly you can do it in leather. One of the problems you're going to have, though, is on your cushion. This is a loose cushion on this. So make sure that the leather that you pick is a very thin leather and a very pliable leather. Usually the Italian leathers are the best, so keep that in mind. <coughs> That's a very challenging project. It tells me where you are on your skill level, if you can do that. And of course, leather has to be stretched um, much tighter than fabric. <coughs> I have two more of these webbings to do on this. I'm kind of excited to get this done on camera. She said, yes, it has curves. The back looks like a smile on top. Yeah, she said. I can tell you, you you're going to get into trouble with this one if you if you do it. If you could send a picture just to confirm my, my doubts about using leather on that, you can. But um, usually anything with an inside curve, um, you, you have to realize that um, unless you're doing a lot of gluing, and that's tricky too because you can't really, it has to be glued to almost like a wood platform and really thin. Um, a lot of, here's the mistake a lot of people make in trying to overcome a curve like that. The mistake is they're trying to, they try to add padding, which has the opposite effect. 
So be very careful with this one. Um, I, I still think a wool is the best thing to use around an inside curb like that. Non-pattern. Um, um, does that make sense? Uh, but if you want to set a picture, you can. She wants to know if suede would be easier if leather is too challenging. Suede is just the reverse side of leather. So um, it's going to have the same amount of problems. Fabric, uh, most fabrics would have a problem too with this. That's why a lot of times, oh, the tub chair. I don't know if, did Erica, is Erica viewing the tub chair, Patrick? Is she doing the tub chair? Um, I have to, have to check, I'm not sure. Because uh, the tub chair that currently is up, um, there's a good example there of, of a real, real curve. Uh, the fabric that Michelle used on that was a good fabric, not the best to use for a curve. But she got most of her wrinkles out on that. It's a fabric, keep in mind, but it also has seams in the right spot. They like those wedge seams. Um, if you want to learn about how to put uh, backs on uh, in cur on curves, that's a good one to, to show. Um, you can expect to spend a lot of time on a, on a back like that, though, to try to get it right. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Yes, Erica is in that class, so. <coughs> oh, you, you got the best class to, to watch um, on how to overcome now. She was left with some, some wrinkling on her, on her tub chair, which she accepted. She got most of them out, which was really impressive. Um, the solution for her would have been buttons. You know, you see a lot of buttons in curved backs for that reason. She didn't want buttons, so she worked really hard on getting those um, wrinkles out. And she did uh, pin tacking and repin tacking, stretching and stretching, and she, she got it really, really primo. So I'm glad you have that. That's a, that's a very good uh, video. Okay, so. Thank you, Erica, for purchasing that custom video. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I was thinking about it, that we don't necessarily have to wait for a, uh, a love seat. I can, I can even do it in a club, a chair that is similar to that. It's just double the amount of work for you, that's all. <laughs> but um, we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. So let's turn this up and take a look to see what I repaired it. Wow, I can't believe this. <laughs> they really did a good job at getting it back. Like I said, um, it has the slip cover, thank goodness, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim up a couple of this little loose ends here for the client. Actually, Michelle's class... Um, Erica, for anybody else, um, I would advise you, you're getting a lot of bonus classes in that. Um, what did we go, nine classes on that, I think, Patrick, or ten, nine or ten? Yeah, there's yeah. nine on that, and it's so for the same, same price, price, too, so. so. Same price, and we're not going to, if we go over on a project, um, then, you know, we're not going to charge extra, but there were three, at least three bonus classes in that. In that. Um, the other subject that came up, I think Jimmy brought it up last week in the live question and answer. He's wondering about sofas and love seats uh, on an online class. This depends on, we have space limitations here, so um, I think it's a good idea. I think, I, I think that as far as saving money, you save more money recovering a love seat on a sofa than you do on a chair. So if you're looking at it from that angle, that's great. We just have to work out space issues before we get into that. But I think those will be very popular classes, Patrick. Yeah, and I wanted to do that. I think we're going to do some of that on-the-road stuff, too. That might be fun. But yeah, we got this love seat on the road coming up. Yeah, so that might, either that might be a class or that just might be a regular YouTube video. It depends how much we can put in there. Right. So I'm just going to test this chair out. I'm going to sit on it. 
with my big frame and see if I did a good job. Now, if it falls down, don't laugh. If I, if I, if I sit down on this and I go through the floor, we, we don't want laughter. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Well, how close are we to uh, check it out unless there are other questions? I just want to follow up on what uh, Erica was saying. She said, I'll, she said, I'll send you pictures of the next projects I wanted, and you can let me know if you have any, uh, any projects similar coming into the shop, and I'll do a custom video on one of them. Okay, so sometimes, um, you know, customers will insist. I'm not sure if this is for a customer of hers, this, this chair, this leather chair, or if it's for her. Um, sometimes customers come to me and they insist on me doing something and I have to really gently tell them, listen, I, I want to do a good job, like that swan chair, you guys can Google that swan chair to see what that looks like, you won't believe the curves on that chair. Um, it just can't be done, you know, you, you put a fabric with the, with the geometric shape on that um, that doesn't have the weave, the, the stretch that, that a wool has, it's impossible to get all the wrinkles out. So sometimes you just have to let people down. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I think that's going to do it, right, Patrick? Uh, we, still have, we still have like 15 minutes left. Oh, we still have 15 minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is show you, um, I did a small segment on YouTube on an East Lake chair. I think I want to bring that up and show you. Um, I actually started restoring it today. And um, I think somebody, I think Erica or Janine commented on that chair. They were, they were commenting about the fact how you give clients choices and kind of guide the client to make the choices that they want on, a, on style. So this is a good example of that. Also rescuing a chair. We, I, I feel as though I rescued this chair from you know somebody who did a poor job without really knowing what they were doing. It, it, we excuse that, don't worry. But I'm going to bring that up there. I'm happy with this. I'm going to put the cambric on this, which is easy, right? So that's, that's good. She's going to be happy with that. I'm going to put this aside for now. Let's get that east leg up here. And how are you doing on that chair, Michaela? That Spanish chair? She's almost done. Wow, that's pretty impressive. She's almost done stripping the seat. And I, I think when she's done, if we have time, I want to bring that old back over here to show you guys what she did. A lot of the, the pieces that come to us, so we get ma two main categories. One would be uh, reupholstering, which means we're taking the old fabric off, we're re repairing minor repairs, and we're replenishing underneath with maybe a half a layer of cotton or something. The other category, they're broad categories. The other category is restoration. We're pretty much where you're taking everything off, going down to the frame and starting all over again. In that category, you could be using the old as many as much as the old material as as you as you can, as long as the client is okay with that, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, or you you starting from scratch and you're using all new materials. And if, when you do something like that, you have to decide: Do I use synthetics? Do I use natural fibers? When do I use these? Uh, where do I use these? So those are, those are a lot of big questions that come up. And again, on on Michelle, on her first, she did that East Lake chair that came to us. Uh, she she got those curb side, you guys. So she found two beautiful East Lake side chairs on the curb, and she had to take that down to the frame because they were they were left out in the rain. So that is also another interesting uh, online class uh, for you guys if that ever comes up. So I'm going to bring this up now to show you. So we're not going to be too hard on the on the people that did this the last time because I can tell you the way it was done. It was done probably by maybe a dealer in antiques, um, probably the antique dealer themselves, who decided that they had to cosmetically make it look good to sell it. I don't blame them at all for what they did. They actually did a pretty good job on the cosmetic end of this, um, but not so good on the interior. So. Um, when it came to me, um, the back, believe it or not, the back, the inside back and the outside back were in pretty good shape. I took the fabric off to discover that I don't think I'm going to do too much to that. Now, the customer 
is going to prefer this like it is. They like that low profile, but I will tell you that on the East Link, right? So they did, the profile was changed on the back. It had a profile that was, uh, we use edge roll to get a bigger profile on the back. That's, that's what makes East Lake unique. Um, Victorian, it's around the same Victorian era. They had a, they had a smaller back, an upholstered back without the profile. So, but but the client likes that because it's a it's a platform rocker. She kind of likes the fact she's got more room to lean back and so so things like that. You need to really discuss with your client. You need to get an idea what they like. Um, the other thing that really was not good was um, I took the fabric off the arms. Guess what? There was no padding at all on this. So. If they just went right over the wood, that's a real no-no, right? Because it wouldn't have taken too long for this to wear right through, the fabric to wear right through. Now, but the biggest thing, biggest problem was the seat. So when this came to me, um, I could tell that it was just a piece of foam in there in the fabric. Um, and the webbing that they had put in failed. So they didn't secure it right. They didn't have the right stapling. So it's really important to use the right staple gun and the right staple. At first, when I looked at this, I thought, I think I even mentioned it. I was trying to pull it off. I said, oh, they, they had a pneumatic staple gun, but they didn't have the right staples. So the staples they used for the webbing failed because they didn't go in all the way, and the, and the webbing pulled away around the stapling. So you had to be careful what you use for staples guns and pneumatic staple guns. So I restored this. I, I used the edge roll, that big heavy edge roll. I'll show you. <coughs> that had to go, it needed to be webbed again on the top, there's no springs in this. And then I had to do a, a double edge on the front with the fox edging, all the way around, okay? That took a little time. And then, believe it or not, the polyurethane that they had, and of course, again, I, the customer and I talk about this, was okay to be reused. I, so I reused it as a base, but then I used a piece of one inch foam over that and then the day cron. And it came out pretty good. I, I'm really happy with the way it came out. I know it's going to last a long time. Um, so you might be asking, why didn't I use any of the any natural fibers in this? I'll tell you why, because it would have been too expensive. I would have had to use horsehair. And East Lake, they didn't use horsehair. A lot of times they just use hay. So I don't use hay. Don't, and I would have not advise you guys to use hay. Hay breaks down too quick. Horse hair is a replacement for hay, and that would be too expensive. So we're always trying to find ways of value, too. So, um, so this is almost ready for upholstery. I do want to show you what I'm using for upholstery. We have a, a, a woman here, uh, Pamela, who picks fabric out for people. She does a really good job. So she, she has a remnant that she picked, just a diamond-shaped remnant. Okay, And we even found her a trim here that we're going to use to trim it out with. So that's it. So before we go, I want to show you the chair that Michaela is. We're, we're really busy here today with stuff. I'm going to show you the chair that she's been working on. Any more questions, Patrick? No, not yet. Okay. I'm going to evaluate this right now to see what what else we need to be done on this. Good job, Michaela. I didn't think you were going to get done with that. She had to take out decorative tacks, which was a double row on each rail. And uh, she had to remove the fabric from the bottom. I'm going to carefully peel this back just to see. I can tell you right now, this fabric screams 70s to me. The color and also it has that heavy Herculean back, which is the, you know, the first synthetic, one of the first synthetics, you know, it's a really heavy, heavy fabric. It does last forever. It's a call, to, it's, this is a crushed velvet. I haven't seen this, one of these in a long time, fabric like this in a long time. I'm just gonna take that off. Let's just feel it. This actually has a pretty good feel to it. I'm gonna peel back to see what's going on. Oh, look at this, you guys, wow. Get a close-up of this, Patrick. This is pretty impressive. I'm excited, Michaela, because this, this is a heavy, heavy bed, a heavy cake of really premium horsehair. 
okay? So what that means, uh, I, folks, I can't say enough about horsehairs or batting. I mean, you still can get horsehair today. You can, you can order it. But if you look at this, I'm going to get really close. Doesn't that look like a coil spring? Each hair, if they're short hairs, they come from the body of the horse and they're, and they're spring. So you've got a million of these in this seat. It's like having a million tiny springs working. And that's exactly why at this point in the ball game, I don't have to do anything to this other than to add a little cotton. So that's why you don't want to overdo it on your stripping end of things, folks. You can reupholstering. Remember that word, reup. Re You're not actually restoring. That's two things, right? And I'm sure the back is just as exciting with the horse hair in it. So I think that's a good place. Uh, Erica just left a really, a really cool comment. comment. Oh, Michaela, you yeah, might want to read that. It's okay. a long one. <laughs> Before we go, I think we're going to read Erica's comment. I'm really excited about this chair, Michaela. You did a good job taking it apart. Very thoughtful, too. She says, I am reupholstering a bench right now using a hundred, a hundred year old French velvet. I need to do a double welting. Can I cut this straight instead of bias? The fabric is so expensive, I'd rather not. Absolutely, you can. One of the most overrated things in upholstery is the fact that people think they need to cut everything on the bias. What cutting on the bias comes from dressmakers. That's very important when you're making a dress or a suit to cut on the bias because you're looking for something to fall without anything attached to it. Upholstery is not like that. So the, the advantage to not cutting on the bias is you save tons of fabric. But more importantly, you can get more of a length out of something like that if you're careful cutting, right? If you're cutting, if you're cutting in that in mind to have a piece, a long piece on an end for your, for your double piping. Definitely, it's overrated cutting on the bias. You can cut it straight, no problem. Good question, though. Ted, that's a great way, unless she has another follow-up comment or, or question. Great way to end uh, this segment. I think this was a very exciting segment, and I can't wait for next week. And you will uh, keep, keep, uh, keep you updated as to the time and day on that. And we're trying to get more consistent with these, too. So for everybody here, for, for Patrick, myself, and Michaela, we'll see you next time. Thanks.